everybody. Thanks for tuning in on a Wednesday instead of a Thursday. And the re reason why uh, we're doing this on Wednesday this week is that we are going to take a little pause from doing Thursday night happening. We've done 10 shows in a row, 10 weeks in a row, uh, a lot of preparation. I've had a lot of fun and you have been, all of you have been my sunshine over the last 10 weeks because I really missed performing and I missed the connection that a musician naturally has with an audience. It's something that's beautiful and it's something that in this current climate of the pandemic, it's really, it's really been lost to a large extent. And uh, we felt that the best way f for me to reestablish that would be to do something musically diverse where every week I would play a different kind of music and the most important thing is to raise money for a really great cause and we raised a whole bunch of money for the Greater Chicago Food Depository. Enough money to pay for more than 12,000 meals for people who can't afford to buy food for their families. And this, this really makes me feel good. I mean, I never hear applause, so I don't feel good in the same way that I feel when I go to a club or a concert uh, stage and, and feel the audience. But I feel, the, I, I know that you guys are out there listening and the fact that so many of you have donated money and sent in all these beautiful comments while we do the shows, it just has made me feel really wonderful. But you know, 10 weeks of this uh, <laughs> it's made me really appreciate what people go through uh, doing like Saturday Night Live and all these other weekly shows where you, you get it into your head that, you know, God, I have to start preparing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I know what I'm going to do next week. Narrow it down to five tunes and practice just enough, not too much, and, and challenge myself. Uh, so we started out with Americana. I just thought that was a good place to start. Uh, just playing some of my favorite tunes that are really quintessentially American. And then um, Brasiliana, you know, Brazil is just one of my favorite places in the world. And I've been there four times on tour and I have been playing Brazilian music for like 30 or 40 years. I, I totally, I totally love it. Uh, and so, uh, God, I wish I could just play tonight Brazilian music for an hour. Next, uh, I did New Orleans, and now, you know. Yeah, Professor Longhair's uh, version of Big Chief. New Orleans, again, this, these are places that are close to my heart. They're extremely meaningful to me musically, culturally, just the vibe that you feel when you're in these places influences my composing and all of my music making. And of course, classical music is how I started uh, playing, um, taking piano lessons at the Manhattan School of Music when I was nine years old. And uh, so I, I love improvising to classical music because I started doing that when I was nine, you know, making up things that went along with the chord progressions of these pieces I was playing, especially if they were too hard for me to read, I'd say, oh, I think it goes like this. And I would make up something in the middle of a Chopin piece or something. It, the, the changes were right. I didn't realize I was a jazz musician yet. <laughs> and then improvs by request. That's another thing I, I've been doing since I was nine. I mean, I just think about something and I make up some music that reflects that mood or that feeling. I used to read books with one hand and improvise something on piano with the other hand while I read, and, you know, that prepared me for all the stuff I've done for writing music for plays and uh, playing on movie soundtracks and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, of course, Middle Eastern and Eastern European music. Um, I toured for, for years with Rabia Abu Khalil, a Lebanese oud player, 
and uh, started a band called the Balkan Rhythm Band in Chicago way before that. Um, you know, I'm just super at home with all of these different uh, rhythms and different modalities and, uh, you know, playing in 11, you know. something I love doing. So th that's why I did this. I, said, I wanted to share with you all of these different things that I, that I truly love, um, that are all these different sides of my music making that I, uh, some people who are, you know, fans or, or like my music might not realize all of these different things. And so I thought I would bring something unique to uh, the live stream mentality of, of trying to you know, show a different side of, of my music, uh, musical explorations every week. And it seems like you really enjoyed it. And then for the Jewish holidays, uh, to coincide with that, I did a thing I called My Spin on Jewish Music. I did some liturgical things and some uh, Yiddish pop music, and I really had fun doing that. Um, I might even record an album of liturgical Jewish music. I've been thinking about that. And then, of course, uh, my jazz hero, my musical hero, John Coltrane. I did uh, several of his pieces that I really loved, and including a, uh, a poem that I read, uh, that I wrote about him, that I played to the melody of his uh, beautiful uh, C sharp minor blues equinox. And then, uh, then I did a program of Bach, uh, who was my favorite classical composer. I mean, that's a kind of a, sounds like a cliche, but it, it's really true. And Bach was one of the towering geniuses of music whose effect is still felt by musicians all over the world and in every genre of music to this day. So many rock musicians and jazz musicians are inspired by Bach because, you know, like jazz, Bach was an amazing improviser. It's just, he also was an amazing notator, so he could improvise something and say, oh, that sounds really great. I will think I'll write that down while I'm drinking a cup of coffee with my left hand. So uh, I try to, you know, bring the essence of my love for all of these different styles to you. And in the process, I learned a lot about, about these things. It, it placed a pressure on me, but a good kind of pressure. So uh, the last show I did, I kind of took a chance, but it wasn't really a chance because, I mean, everyone can sing, you know, really. I mean, it's really true. Everybody can sing, whether you're a singer or not, that's another story, but everyone can sing. And so I decided I would sing uh, some of my favorite uh, folk tunes that I got into when I was probably 14 or 15 years old first uh, ter first time I heard a uh, finger picking guitar, a friend of mine at, at a summer camp that I went to uh, played finger picking guitar and I went, wow, that's beautiful. Uh, and the, he sang these songs, I went, wow, these are some really cool songs, who wrote those? And uh, soon after that, actually at the summer camp, we went to hear Pete Seeger do a concert. And uh, that was the first time I had attended a live folk music concert, and he was just wonderful, just a wonderful human being, an incredible singer, probably the only singer who asks you to, asked, he passed away, but when he would ask you to sing along, it was not like a phony thing, uh, and, and he would sing these high harmony parts that were unbelievable, and you did feel like singing when Pete asks you to sing. And so, you know, these are all, all of these different shows, they're all things that are heartfelt musical loves of mine. But you know, doing 10 of them in a row, <laughs> and we finished the 10th one, it's like, okay, what are we gonna do next week? Uh, and I thought, maybe next week we take a break, because uh, it's just a certain kind of pressure. And uh, I also started getting asked to, uh, to compose. I had some commissions to compose some music. And with the show hanging over my head, it really got more difficult to do other projects, recordings and composing. 
because, you know, for me, I'm a performer. I really want to give my best all the time. I don't want to, like, sit down at the last second and go, well, I'm going to kind of sort of do this. You know, I, I want to make an excellent experience for everyone. So I'm going to just take a little break for a while. And when I feel that I have enough mental clarity after I've been, you know, composing for a while and uh, I'm, I'm also mixing some CDs that, that are in the can that I'm planning to put out over the next uh, few months to, the, to, uh, to a year, uh, some older stuff, some newer stuff, uh, all the, you know, harmonica things, piano things. Uh, I have a whole CD of duets that I did that, that are really wonderful that I've been waiting for the right time to put out. So that'll come out sometime, uh, sometime next year. And so I'm gonna keep working really hard on all of my different musical streams. Uh, and I promise that we'll be back doing this show. And uh, I thank you very, very much for tuning in for the past 10 weeks. And for those of you who donated, I really, really appreciate it. And also just the personal, the personal touch of, of seeing, you know, comments on the screen. It, it really means a lot to musicians to know that we, we still have an audience in the middle of this insane time. So if you want to check out the past 10 shows, you can go to uh, my website, which is levyland.com. And all, the, all 10 of these shows are there. And uh, you can watch them and also check out everything else that's there. Of course, uh, you know, all the CDs and my notated music. I, I tried to, to actually uh, put up a bunch of the music that I played on a bunch of these shows, uh, notated it, especially my original compositions. Uh, they're all my original compositions that are up on the website. So if any of you musicians are interested in trying to play some of the tunes you've heard, uh, you can check out the uh, notation part of Levy Land, and uh, that way, uh, you know, you might want to uh, you might want to check out some of the things that are written uh, that are for sale up there: lead sheets and piano scores uh, of all these different pieces that I played. So, once again. I just want to thank you. I know I've been yapping a whole bunch. Uh, uh, so maybe I should play something as a little goodbye. But not a goodbye. It's, it's uh, Avida Zane, you know. Hasta luego. Not hasta mañana, but... Uh, Thanks very much, everybody. Good night. See you soon. <laughs>